named our school STAR as an acronym for Service to All Relations. It's to remind us consistently that we're here uh, as part of a group. We're in relationship, all of us here at the school. All right, good morning, STAR School students. And it also reminds us that we're in relationship to the culture that's around us. That's why it becomes important for us to identify ourselves with a place-based idea of education. With place-based education, what we, what we do is start with um, learning from where we are. So we go outside and, and we climb up our hills and, and we dig in the cinders and, and we, learn, uh, we start learning based on the landscape that we are living on, living in. I would say place-based education is really utilizing the environment that you have around you, wherever it is that you're at, um, to facilitate your teaching. One of the more fun things that we did was um, all the kids collected sticks and we were studying lizards and reptiles and they collected one big stick and then two smaller sticks and we, they actually got to paint their lizards. Every lizard was different. One was this big, one was this big. You got to see the kids' personalities shine yeah. through. Um, they got to put the googly eyes on there and the, and the tongue and then after that for good, I mean solid two months, they were like so open and so inspired by every single animal they saw, especially the lizards. This week our peach trees have started blossoming and so um, of course then bees and butterflies have started coming around which uh, they can have this first-hand concrete experience in the place where they live um, that launches us into studying insects in general and um, we, we create art projects uh, imitating the the peach trees and, and just infuse it throughout the curriculum so we start um, in the place where we where we live So one of the other things that we do with place-based education is um, working with the trees, which is here, planted here at the Star School. We had to check to see how many trees had blossoms and which, what the condition of the limbs were. So we were able to infuse math with our caretaking of the trees. I wanted them to measure how big and how wide the berms were because we're going to use um, cardboard to put down to keep the, to, as mulch on, on the bottom, we'll put cardboard down and then mulch on top of that to keep the water um, in the ground. I grew up with fruit trees, with peach trees and apricot trees, and I remember picking them and those trees getting huge and seeing all the apricots and peaches on the ground and picking them and then taking them apart and drying them and stuff. Once a month we go, as one of our service projects, we go out to the, the campus at school here and collect all the trash we can find. We come back and um, separate it out for recycling and what would be trash, so we're using we're doing that, but we're also counting it and using tallies. And then we're, at, we're able to compare, like, okay, Mr. Davis' class had 157 pieces of trash, Ms. Corey's had 154. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to teach our children about their surroundings, 
because they need to be aware of where they are. You introduce them to the plants, you introduce them to the trees, you introduce them to Shamana Hastan, Mother Earth. And we need to teach them about the four directions, the four sacred mountains, the four elements of life. And we need to teach this to our children so they are aware of it and they can pass it on to their children as well. Look to the west, to the west is that way. We believe, as particularly with indigenous cultures, that recognizing the values, the history, the conflicts and the resolutions to those conflicts of our place is essential for us to be able to reach our children at a deep level. The people need to know the laws. Write them in the sand. The wind will blow them away. Write them on the water down. They are disappeared. Thank you, George, and write them in the sky. And one of the ways that you use it is to um, find commonalities between cultures and then to see the differences between them but, but appreciate both sides regardless of what kind of culture it is. The culture piece comes in as being important also in two ways. Uh, one is that we know that adolescent indigenous children are much more likely to be successful in school if they have a well-developed cultural identity in their native culture. One of the main things that I do with place-based education is I try to bring in what I know from my culture, from being a Hopi. So we started calling them by the Spanish names, but we didn't speak Spanish correctly. So we said it in the way that we could say it. So instead of Vakasi, it became Wakasi. And instead of Vakasi, it became Pegasi. Okay? So that's how we got and those then words. Okay? And then English, when the English people came, they said, oh, that's a cow. And so I teach them Hopi um, culture, I teach them Hopi words, I teach them some of the traditions and the, the beliefs that we have. <laughs> One of the ways that we use it as, as far as like Navajo or Hopi culture is, is to see how we're the same, to see how we're all the same and why we should respect one another. How many of you have planted corn before? Yeah? One of our parents came in and she brought her family members in and they did the whole uh, harvesting dance. We had an elder here and he spoke about the importance of corn. I loved what, how he was talking about however straight you plant the corn is how the corn cob will grow. So if you're not paying attention to your corn planting, the corn on the ear, it will be crooked. <laughs> you turn around, see, see all these the story in here. They used the grinding stone and then um, we did the harvest dance so they took their rattles and we danced. from between the Navajo culture and the, the location that we're at, that it's, it's a really magical place to be able to go outside and really teach.
topics that are just so close at hand. The coast leads it's to the west of our Navajo Nation. The coast lead. My mother does herbs and she goes out there and she prays to Mother Earth and to the plants so she could get medicine off of the off of the um, the mountain. Do coast we teach our children how to take care of Mother Earth. We identify with her as Shaman Hassan. And for Shaman Hassan to provide us with food, water, good land for growing, for planting, we need to teach our children to take care of Shaman Hassan. I think place-based education allows us to understand our humanness. Thank mm -hmm. you.